It's time for a budget hacks video, everybody. Yes, mountain biking can be a pretty pricey game from the parts you use to maintaining your bikes. So fear not, in this video today, I have got some great ways that you can save money on parts you might need or looking after your trusty steed. Right, before we dive into the video, people, why not show the channel a little bit of love by hitting that subscribe button and banging the bell again to get all the latest and greatest notifications as to when the videos are out just for you. Anyway, it's time to dive in. You bought some new handlebars and they're pretty flipping wide. Now, normally handlebars are about 800 mil when you buy them wide. So unless you've got the wingspan of an albatross, that is generally a little bit too much. So you need to cut them down. Now, this is a great hack. The legit way to cut down handlebars is using a saw guide, one of these little beauties. This is the Park Tools one here. And essentially the hacksaw blade runs through a nice guide to get a good, straight, clean cut. But not all of us have got one of these and they can be a bit pricey. So, ta-da, here's one I prepared earlier. The lock-on saw guide. So, the lock-on clamps from your grips make an excellent way of getting a nice, clean cut. You can see our nuke proof bars here. They've got nice width markings all on them. Well, if you've got an old grip, with a lock on, you can either slide that one on, clamp it on and cut down the nice straight edge there. Or if you've got two, take the old lock ons off. You can clamp the two close together and use that as your guide. So you cut down through that gap there, giving you a nice clean cut, quick file off of any sharp edges. And hey presto, you've got a makeshift saw guide. Our next budget hack. Well, it's a doozy because it's marking your cockpit. So you have a crash, your brake levers have moved, you got a new bike and you're not sure exactly how you'd like them or how they were set up previously. Well, using a permanent marker is a, just a, a cheap, free, easy way, if you like, of making sure that your bike is set up exactly the same all of the time. Marking where those brake levers might sit, how far in your grips compared to your brake levers or your shifter go, your dropper lever as well and even where your bar's roll is with regards to the stem. So once you put your stem on, you can mark on the handlebar where the top clamp is essentially on the stem and always line those two pen marks up, if you like. And hey presto, you've got exactly the same all the time. There's some real easy ways of doing this as well. A lot of brake levers and things like that will actually have little cutouts on them. So you can draw within that cutout and just when you put or change your brakes, move them, whatever, need to service them, Make sure that those marks line up again every time. And just like that, you're not making it weird. It's not gonna be weird. It's not odd, it's always the same, and you're just gonna love it every time you ride. The cheap mud guard next then. So mud guards, very useful in the winter. You don't wanna be forgetting one of those, but they can be a bit costly, especially the real nice ones that bolt directly to the forks. So there's a great way around this, and it's actually a little bit of recycling. So an old plastic bottle of milk carton or whatever can be cut up and used and made into the rough shape of a mud guard. And hey presto, with a few zippy ties, that mud is out of your eyes. Perfect. Chainstay protection now. So chainstay protectors, frame guards, all this kind of stuff can be bought in packs. Proper stuff that fits your bike, nice, neat, tidy, does the job, but actually, there are ways around this, yes. Have you ever heard that loud chain slapping on your chain stay, so the chain's rattling up and down and chipping away at the paint, things like that on your bike? Well, that ain't no good and you don't want it and you ain't got the spare cash to go and buy all these fancy kits. Fear not. Next time you get a puncture with your old inner tube, don't just throw it away. Oh no, more recycling, my friends out there. Yes, you can actually cut it up and tidily wrap it around your chain stay with a couple of zip ties at the end done nice and neatly. And it can look really tidy and it will just help soften or quiet the noise down and protect your frame at the same time. So it's actually a two for, and everyone likes a two for one deal. So yeah, just take note. You can use these in a lot of different ways. And actually you can put it on other parts of the bike as well if you want. So not just to protect the chain stay, but if you're getting a lot of foot rub on the seat stays or sometimes around the bottom of the down tube, things like that, just to stop whatever might be pinging up and hitting the frame, chipping paint, and just keeping that bike running nice, smooth, and looking good at the end of its life. I want to talk all things silencing now. So bikes or a noisy bike is really 
quite a frustrating thing to hear on the way down the trail, right? Especially when you put the effort into other areas, like we just said about protecting that chainstay to keep things quieter and nicer and cleaner and tidier. So cables clattering and banging away at the front of the bike, all right, it might not seem like the worst thing in the world, but it's definitely noticeable. Your dropper, your brakes, your gears, things like that, just banging and clattering, just all the way down the trail can get really frustrating. So with a clever bit of zip tie or tape work here, you can really tidy up the cockpit of your bike by sort of sometimes potentially rerouting cables so that they run nice and parallel together and then zip tying them or, or um, taping them together, sorry, or just some strategically placed zip ties at cross points to stop them. So if they're crossing like this, rather than knocking together, if you can zip tie them together, <laughs> they will stop. Hey presto, a much quieter bike. But hey, we're at the end of the video. Do you know what? Let me know in the comments down below. If you've got any more great budget hacks which you think can save you a few quid along the way of your mountain bike journey, I'd always love to hear from them. But for me, for now, I am out of it. Thank you very much for watching everybody and I will catch you next time.